This is Cleveland Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with McNeese in Marbella. We've got the press conference here for Brook Chavez, October 24th mm. from Sheffield. Uh, Kel Brook uh, makes his return to Sheffield. Kel Brook is, uh, is a big name here in Sheffield and uh, the atmosphere when he boxed Jojo Dan was, was terrific. Then of course he went on the road, uh, boxed Frankie Gavin and, uh, and he's back in, in a decent test against this Diego Chavez who's obviously mixed in, in, in top class with the likes of Keith Thurman and Timothy Bradley who he drew against. So uh, looking forward to that. Chavez is talking a lot. He'll come over uh, very fiery. And I think at this time when everyone's sort of waiting to see what will happen with the welterweights, we'll May will they call it a day after he fights Andre Berta? Will he come back next year, as most suspect? What will happen with Amir Khan? It's gone a bit quiet there. I think in the meantime, Kel's got to keep himself busy. That's the most important thing. And I expect him to have a, a terrific fight. I think it'll be a really good action. Pat won that against Chavez in Sheffield. Uh, I think he'll come through it. And I'd like to see him in with, with those names, Khan, Thurman, Mayweather, etc., uh, in 2016 and on. Mm. Um, Obviously, this will you know, be his third defence of the title since uh, beating Sean Porter last year. Uh, mixed reviews about um, Diego Chavez, but within the boxing circle, I think people know how tough an opponent Chavez is. I think we do, yeah. I mean, let's, let's not kid ourselves. He, he's not elite draw, is he? He's not, the, he's not a Mayweather. He's not really a, a Thurman either. And, and Bradley probably would have been better. But, you know, it takes, um, it, it takes a lot to, to make these fights, to get these guys to come over. Um, I think Diego Chavez is a, is a good test for Kel. Um, I think he had it too easy against Frankie Gavin, who you know, who admitted he he, he really at the weight and, and at, in that class was 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 probably found wanting. And I had a chat with Frankie about it, and he he thinks Kel is just a you know a superb technician, and and you don't know until you're in there with him how good he really is. Um, I think he does. I think he needs uh, he needs rounds, and he needs really competitive rounds. And I think Chavez will give him that. I think he'll give him uh, a decent fight. As I said, I expect Kel to come through, uh, but I think he needs rounds. He needs to keep busy uh, because. Because obviously Porter's a long time ago now. He's, he's gone through it all, hasn't he, Kel, in the last year, year and a half with the leg and, and, and the rehabilitation from that. Now it's time to really, you know, send a message out to the Americans, deal with this guy on October the 24th, and then hopefully 2016 will be a massive year for Kelbrook. I, as you know, Coogan, still want to see the Brook Khan fight. I think that's huge next summer, uh, somewhere at Wembley or up at Old Trafford or wherever you put it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a huge, huge event. And I think that's something with both of them in slightly in limbo in this terrific division. It's something we want to want to happen, want to make happen, definitely. Also on the same night in Dusseldorf. Um, yeah. Sky have landed uh, Vladimir Klitschko's uh, defence against our very own Tyson Fury. Um, our very own unpredictable Tyson Fury, who was ringside in Leeds, telling everybody that he was going to knock out Klitschko cold and become the unified heavyweight champion, etc., etc. He's unbeaten, isn't he, Tyson Fury? He's big, he's a maverick, no one's quite sure how good he is. Can he give Klitschko a really hard test? Can he produce the upset, or will it be Klitschko, who's shown very little signs of decline uh, in the last year or two, still seems to be as good as ever? Will it be Klitschko, you know, maintaining and cementing his position as the greatest heavyweight of the last, you know, number of years? Um, it's a fascinating one, isn't it? You know, 50,000 will be in uh, Dusseldorf. I hear Rod Stewart singing that night. I think it will be uh, a, an incredible occasion, and I think Tyson Fury will keep us really, really entertained all the way through the build-up. Uh, it's a terrific clash of characters as well, isn't it, with Fury and Klitschko. They're so different. So really looking forward to it. It's a huge night in Dusseldorf, mixed with a big one here in Sheffield. Uh, I hope that uh, fight fans really enjoy it October the 24th, because we certainly will. They should do. Um, let me ask your opinion on a couple of fights there. Not on Sky, obviously, this yeah. weekend. Yeah. Uh, Mayweather's alleged last fight against Andre <laughs> Berto. Much to the dissatisfaction yeah. of, of some people um, post Pacquiao. Yeah. People were kind of speculating who this alleged last opponent would be. Uh, you as shocked as anyone it was Andre Berto in the end? No, not at all. I wasn't shocked at all. I heard whispers actually when we were over in Vegas uh, just after the Pacquiao fight that Andre Berto's name was very much up there. Um, it's disappointing uh, as a match, I think. If it was going to be Floyd Mayweather's final fight, I think, yes, I think the, the, 
the, the fans can rightly be uh, upset. I think we all want to see Mayweather in a, in, in, a, in a better test for what could be, and I say could, be his last fight. I laugh because I don't think Mayweather's uh, going to, re he might retire temporarily. Uh, I have no doubt he'll come back. Uh, he's not a guy that wants to sit on a 49-0 record, is he? He's a guy that wants to break the record. He will be back for, for that 50th fight. Um, I very much expect him to deal with Andre Berto. Maybe he can get a, a rare stoppage, and I think that's possibly why they've, they've picked Berto. Um, you know, Berto will try as hard as he always does. He, he, he's been a powerhouse. We've followed him on Sky for years. Um, he's always an exciting fight, so hopefully he'll make uh, Mayweather, um, you know, really engage. And, and, you know, we might see Mayweather, as I say, get the stoppage. But as, as a match, I think it's disappointing for fight number 49. I'd love to have seen him against Amir Khan or, or Keith Thurman or, or Danny Garcia or somebody else. But I think he will be back, Mayweather. Um, and uh, I think that will be the big fight, whether it's Pacquiao again, whether it's one of those Garcia Thurmans or hopefully one of our guys, Amir Khan or, or Kel Brook, but I think he will be back uh, next May. I'm more interested in what happens with our guy, George Groves, uh, on yeah. the card. I, um, I've been uh, exchanging messages with George and his team. He seems like everything's gone really well in Big Bear. He's very confident. Um, he's got a really, really good chance. I think Badu Jack is you know, up, upset, didn't he, Durrell last time, Anthony Durrell. Um, I think that, that Jack is seen as possibly the weakest of the champions. So it's a really good opportunity for Groves. Having said that, Jack's, Jack's okay. Uh, he's with obviously the Mayweather promotional outfit, so they hold um, in, him in high esteem. And for George, you know, he's been okay since the, the Froch defeat at Wembley. Uh, he's done, you know, he, he beat Rebrasse, didn't he? You know, he de dealt with uh, Dennis Duglin. He's been okay, but he hasn't been outstanding. So I think we're all waiting to see what George Groves is going to produce on Saturday. I think he'll come away with a world title. He's already said he's going to come and uh, show it to us on, uh, on Monday or Tuesday at Sky, because he only lives around the corner. Um, so I'll definitely buy him a coffee if he does that. But I, I, I imagine George will become a world champion. Uh, fingers crossed he does for Britain, because it would be terrific, wouldn't it? See him in with De Gaulle again, and Martin Murray's knocking on the super middleweight world title door as well. There's obviously Callum Smith and Rocky Field in great fight we've got coming out in November. There's, there's plenty of, uh, of, hap of it all happening in the 12 zone division. I don't think our, um, our new uh, comrade Carl Froch will be tempted back, but, uh, but there's so much out there for the sort of new brigade, and I like Groves to be part of that. So fingers crossed he pulls it off, but it's not going to be easy. Um, this weekend, heavy duty um, at the O2. Yeah. Uh, Tickets have done really well. Uh, yeah. Everyone in town just wants to see the big man, Anthony Joshua. There's something about Anthony Joshua. He just ticks the boxes. He's magnetic to be around. Uh, my, my youngest brother, who is uh, a sports fan, but a sort of general sports fan, not a massive boxing uh, fan, but he's just got into the Joshua story. He wants to be there at every single fight. He's, he's reading all about him. He wants to see. I just think he's, he's got that impression. It reminds me a little bit of when you know, Hatton started out and the Mancunians were all around him and, and it just snowballed and snowballed. And of course, because he's a heavyweight, because he won the Olympic gold medal, and because he's such a nice guy and so cool and deals with people so well, I think everybody wants him to be a huge success. He looks the part. He, he seems athletic in the ring. He's got the power. Yes, there's question marks ahead. You know, can he take a punch at top level? Will his stamina be, be, be testing? What will he be like in a hard, hard fight? That's all, that's all for down the line. At the moment, he's got to deal with what's in front of him. 13 opponents so far have failed to go three rounds. Gary Cornish next up, unbeaten in 21. You know, decent, obviously, to have that sort of record. Big guy coming down from Scotland. Doesn't really have the pedigree, though, and probably doesn't have the tools to be able to keep Joshua off him. So I expect another pretty dominant performance from Anthony Joshua. But don't count out an unbeaten fighter. You never know what they're going to do. He doesn't know what it's like to lose Cornish. Uh, but I think he might find out on Saturday night. We shall see. Um, just a quick word on the new ringside that you launched yeah. last week. Uh, has it been perceived, Adam? Exciting times for us, you know, going uh, going onto the digital platform. Um, I think everybody, you know, you look around you, they've, they've got their mobile phones, they've got their iPads, you know, technology sort of moved, it's moved on, hasn't it? You know, people a lot younger than us, Coogan, are sort of, you know, they're on their devices, they, they're on the, the, the social outlets, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram, the Snapchat, all of that stuff. And I think that what we're trying to do is give people short, sharp bursts of daily content for that audience. So hopefully we're gonna, gonna uh, provide more uh, compelling stuff over a course of a week than just an hour uh, of a magazine show. I think we'll be up to date with stuff. We're gonna bring you um, 
news from different gyms. So on a Monday, Ringside Reaction is the, the news of the weekend, the news looking forward. You know, every fight fan's going to want to see what's what's happened and what's going to happen, what the predictions are for the week. Tuesday, Johnny and I are out in the gyms. We did Dylan White yesterday. You know, next week we're going to be um, with uh, the um, the Fight for Change people in down in Westminster. We've got plans to go in uh, some of the academies around the country. We're going out to Eastbourne in a couple of weeks. Uh, lots of different stuff. Uh, Wednesday is a state of the week. So, for example, today we're here in, in Sheffield going to be talking about Kel Brook and about Jamie McDonald's great performance in the weekend. We've got Josh Warrington coming down as well. So that's the state of the week debate. Thursday, rewinding back what happened you know, in the past on that day, on that week. You know, Today, I don't know if you know, 20 years since Eubank Collins too in the yeah, open air of, of, of Cork. So, you know, reminding, going back down memory lane, little snippets of that. And Friday will be the eve of battle, which will be all the sort of last talking points, the debates, not just about fights on Sky and what we're looking forward to, but also, as we talked about, the Mayweather, the Groves, you know, things that are happening on other channels and, and, and other parts of the world. So hopefully that will be a, a full week's content for for fight fans to, to get into. Of course, it's a new thing, so there, there's going to be a, a few teething issues. You know, we've got to get the workflow in, in, in place, everything right, but the team are working so hard to provide so much for, for SkySports.com, and I hope that as this settles down in the coming weeks, it's going to be a, a must for all boxing fans. Um, obviously, moving along with the times and the digital aspects of it is great. Um, obviously, there will be some people that are disappointed that... Sure. They were kind of used to their regular thing on a Thursday, Thursday night. Uh, so were in, we. in front of the box. Yeah, so were Johnny and I yeah. on, a, on, a, on a Thursday night. And we did five five years, and I think it was good. But I think it needed uh, it needed time. We, we've got to check, you know we've got to move with it with, with, with the times. And I think that by going out and about, um, you know, you do it, Coogan. You know, you're at all the press conferences. You're getting the fresh interviews. You know, we need to be we need to be doing that as well. You know, I was sometimes driving home on a Thursday night after the show and thinking, my word, you know, something's changed in the boxing world. We can't go back and, and fix that. That repeats going on a Friday and blah blah blah. You know, it's difficult. You know, yeah. we, we're constantly moving, aren't we? And boxing's such a 24/7 game. Everyone's debating online now. I think we've got to keep up and as fresh and, and as current as we possibly can. Um, but also, I think it's a, a chance for shorter, sharper stuff because you know, watching an hour of television now, it's it's tough to do for people. People are, are, are very busy with their lives, and I think you know, attracting the, the sort of mobile and the iPad audience, and you can you can just flick on and get it wherever you are, whenever you want it. I think that's the way forward, and we're hoping that everybody gets into it and that that will drive the the fight nights and, and the, the big events uh, on Sky Sports but we're also going to have plenty of stuff on Sky Sports on linear as well you know we've got an Anthony Joshua uh, preview show on, on, on Friday previewing the Cornish fight we're going to have big build up we're going to have we're doing a ringside special coming up pretty soon with Frank Bruno there's going to be gloves are off there's going to be all the usual stuff ahead of the Sky Box Office events so there's plenty on Sky Sports too and all the fight nights too but it just gives a balance lots of digital content and supported by huge amounts of, of fights as well. Okay, well, Adam Smith, thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV. It's your colleague there behind eating some porridge. Well, uh, that's good for him. Yeah? Yeah, keeps himself in shape, doesn't he? In shape, yeah. Still, he's not going <laughs> to fight again, though. Yeah. But can it, what, what do you think his... What, do you, what were your feelings when Marco Hook got knocked out? Well... Were you happy because he didn't break your record? Or were you sad that you weren't I the guy to do it? I can never tell the truth or tell a lie. I'm so glad you I, didn't do it. I can be professional and tell the truth. <laughs> uh, tell a lie or tell the truth. I'm going to interview, <laughs> I'm gonna interview you anyway. But I can give you thoughts now. Uh, uh, said himself right. He got more money offered him to fight me than go to America and be a star and get knocked out. Did you make the right decision not fighting him? No. No, no he didn't fight me. I did not fight him. <laughs> <laughs> would you have knocked him out? I'd have, I'd, I'd have made him look like a clown. I probably might have knocked him out. Wouldn't have knocked him out. I just want to remind him. everybody here, Coogan, that we're in the Sheffield Town oh, Hall, and God, this was the you. arena where Johnny had to sit outside when everybody else had gone home after the <sighs> infamous Carlos de Leon fight, which changed only a baby then. all of and our, our viewers don't all of our part. lives forever. But that's why we remind our viewers of such. Uh, uh, it was like it was like. It made you. Man. It made you. <laughs> It made you into the man you became. But let's not forget <laughs> the, the appalling hour we had 
to suffer, at, whether we're watching on television or the people what unfortunate enough to be here. Mike Goodall's here somewhere, and he said that before the fight, you were called Johnny the Entertainer Nelson, <laughs> and at the end of it, Brendan said, let's just take the entertainer bit out. <laughs> Mike Goodall was the, uh, the the ring announcer, and he had black hair, he looked, he looked yeah. young. No, in fact, he's always looked like that, hasn't he? That's 25 years ago, 25 years ago. 26 in January. All the memories. You guys are really showing your age, yeah. Adam, Johnny, <laughs> thanks for the TV. Johnny will catch up with you a little bit more in depth in a minute. Cheers, Gugan. Thank you very much.